Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Hager. It's Global Wrestling News. In order to better align its programs with the Mountain West and with the intent to add baseball in the future, Boise State announced Tuesday that it will no longer offer wrestling. The director of athletics, Kurt Apsey, said that this was not an easy decision, but one that needed to be made as we consider long-term vision for Bronco athletics. We caught up with the Boise State coaches, Mike Mendoza and Andrew Hochstrasser. You know, I've been here nine months, 10 months, or, uh, you know, in a short while. And, and, and I felt like this program was really going the right direction. I mean, yeah, our team GPA, you know, is one of the top, you know, top 30 in the, in the country that the NWCA just announced, which is, which is great. And these guys worked hard at it. And, um, you know, we were, we were doing things like that. We were, our grades were, were, were good. Our GPA is, you know, the highest it's been in 15 years here. So, um, you know, things were going in the right direction academically. Things were going in the right direction athletically in terms of the culture and the type of guys that are going to represent the university well. And, um, you know, our recruiting class, I mean, we, we signed 11 guys and some top kids in the country, probably, you know, you know, I'd argue a top recruiting class. And so a lot of things were going in the, in the right direction. Um, and that's that's you know what what uh, what makes it tough you know also is is knowing that you know we were looking forward at a, a great vision here for this program, and um, you know such a great history of success and and there's a lot of uh, alums out there that uh, that were a part of this program that that saw this program win conference titles and place in the top 10, uh, in, in the country and, and, um, you know, put guys in the top of the podium, national champions, all Americans, Olympians. And, and so, you know, there's, there's a lot behind this program and the direction that it was starting to, to go, um, was great. And, um, you know, and, and so, yeah, it makes it a little bit tougher. And I, and I think even, um, you know, for, for the people in, in, the athletic department here, they, 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 um, they saw the change in this program and they were excited. I mean, and, and so it's hard for them too. Um, I mean, there, 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 there's some people that are really, uh, heartbroken over this and, um, but there's a lot, a lot being done out in the, in the community. And, and, um, you know, I, I, to tell you the truth, there's a lot out in the community that, that, uh, I'm still learning about, you know, minute by minute. Right now, wrestling. There's not a wrestling program here. Right now, there's there's not a wrestling program moving forward, and so it's about finding a, a, a place for these guys uh, to go and, and and getting options for them right now, um, or letting them know that they have an opportunity to go to school here and that their scholarship will be honored here. And that's that's really, um, you know, the message for these guys right now is it's about their future. And, you know, some of these guys, they, they, they're really limited. They, they probably don't have an opportunity to go somewhere else just because the signing day was, you know, April 12th. And a lot of schools, there's very not a lot of spots, roster spots probably, or, or uh, scholarship available for them, to, you know. But they have an opportunity to go to Boise State if they, if they want. The school is honoring their, their scholarship. So, you know, um, yeah, there's really um, – you know, not a not a pause on 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 this at all. I mean, it just right. You know, at this point, um, wrestling's done here uh, at the moment. So I was made aware. I think it was was it Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Um, just the same time, uh, 4 p.m. The same time as all the other uh, wrestlers found out, and the same time as the coaches found out, which. Uh, which is actually seems like it was after the media because the media was posted as soon as we came out of that meeting. So, you know, there had been talk, there'd been talk for, for a while now, but, uh, we were definitely reassured that, that everything was fine as far as the wrestling program. So this is coming from the student council. And, uh, so what they did, they had a vote, 10 vote, 10 zero to pause it. And then another set of student council, also voted 10-0, so they had a 20-0 deposit. So that doesn't mean it's actually paused. Um, so from from my information is uh, 
Dr. Kustra is out of town, and when he gets back on Monday, he will either accept the pause or sign it and say, you know, I don't care that it's paused, you know, and he, I guess he has the power to do that. Um, and if he says that, then, then the student council has no say in anything. So the other coaches are, are doing their best to, to figure out the situation. You know, we had 14 guys commit to us, so they're calling them, you know, and, and the timing is just terrible. So they're trying to figure things out, trying to help. They're doing a good job. They're helping these kids to try to find a future for them, you know, in case things don't turn around, you know, they're, they're going to need homes. They're going to need, you know, scholarships to school. And, you know, they're right now they're making phone calls, just hard phone calls telling kids that they, they probably can't come to school here and, and they're going to have to find a place. And, and we've been on the phone a lot with other coaches and, and looking for homes for these kids that we were supposed to provide for. And, and we don't have it for sure. So, you know, that, that's, that's what they've been doing, coming in the office and, and just making phone calls, helping our kids out, you know, helping our future kids and the kids that we have. All right. So Tony, what's the driving factor here? I, it's 100%. It looks like it's baseball. They they think that they want to be a baseball school. They're not. They were at one time. They dropped it. So, you know, this is um, it's not about money because wrestling obviously is going to be a lot cheaper than baseball. I mean, to, to build a stadium, I mean, just a bat alone costs 350 bucks. So, I mean, you can get you can get a singlet, shoes, and headgear for... But to be fair, it's uh, yeah. a really nice bat. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice bat. But this is, uh, this is not a money issue. This is just simply... I think they just thought maybe there might be a bigger picture with baseball, more fans. I'm not really sure, but clearly it makes no sense to wrestling fans. All right, students will be able to transfer, and scholarships and coaches' contracts will be honored, we're told, for those that wish to remain as students. But you got to imagine most of these athletes will be gone. Yeah, I think they're going to be gone, but the problem is, is are they going to have a home for wrestling, a scholarship um, in the wrestling world? I mean, this is these are D1 athletes for a reason, so... What what kind of is a bummer is the signing period's already gone by. Right. So some April. of these yeah, so some of these colleges have already signed some 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 people that they probably would have said, Oh, I'd rather sign the right. Boise State right. kids. So it's just a really bad timing for anything. I mean, they could have done this a full month ago and just give them that much more time to decide whether they wanted to stay at Boise State, keep their scholarships and you know, academically just or, uh, work themselves out of Boise, but uh, a lot of these guys are athletes. They want to compete, so I gotta imagine they're gonna try to find a home somewhere. Well, all in all, it's a sad, sad day for our sport. I'll never watch a football game again on that ugly blue field. I can <laughs> promise you that. Not that I ever did, but there's another excuse to and, not do that. Yeah, and one thing I wanted to bring up, you know, in wrestling, we we're just so reactive when it comes to these type of things. When we hear wrestling programs getting getting split up or canceled, and and possibly getting canceled, I guess. I mean. You know where were a lot of these Boise State fans at the duels? You know where I don't I don't know what the attendance numbers were, but where were these guys supporting this program at that time? And not not saying that they didn't have it, but other schools as well. So going forward, if you're a wrestling fan supporter, do it now. Not don't wait until it's too late. Go out there and help your RTCs, help your coaches, put money in the program, volunteer, do what you got to do so we don't have to have this issue of canceling programs. And that's with every sport, by the way. Support the sports you are fond of. We do. Up next, two former All-Americans are headed back to their alma mater to coach. That's next on Global Wrestling News, powered by Barbarian Apparel. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you, global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the US are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com.
All right, former Iowa State coach Angel Escobedo is returning to his home state of Indiana as he's officially accepted the associate head coaching position at IU. A former standup for the Hoosiers, Escobedo has served the previous two seasons as the Cyclones volunteer coach and trained at the Cyclone Wrestling Club. So fresh off the news, we're joined by Esco himself. Angel, how are you? Thank you. Thank you, Scott. I'm, I'm doing well. You know, I'm excited. You, the the last few, well, four to five weeks were a bit tenuous for you and the rest of the staff at Iowa State uh, because of the changing of the guard, as it were, at Iowa State. Uh, obviously, that program is, uh, is, is, is going to be heading off into different directions, and you didn't really know what your future looked like. Am I correct on that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, you know, up in the air. I was unsure. And, you know, I, I knew God had a plan this whole time. And, you know, sometimes you think that you had the plan, but I knew that it was in God's hands and his timing. So I, um, you know, I just I just kept faith in that and just really was looking for, you know, opportunities out there. And anyone that that came up, I was going to apply. And, you know, my family and I were, you know, we were willing and ready to move anywhere we had to. Well, in this case, it's going back home to Indiana. Have you been looking for a reason to get back to Indiana since graduation? I have. I have. You know, Indiana has always had my heart because that's where I'm from. I wrestled in college at Indiana University. And, you know, I just want to give back so much to the state just because, you know, I was given that opportunity to uh, to go on and do do great things. And so they opened up the door for me. You know, coming from Gary, Indiana, it's like, not not much comes out of there besides Michael Jackson and you know and uh, my my family you know we we all went on to wrestle Division One wrestling so you know it was a good opportunity for us for my family to succeed and so I just want to give back to that state I want to give back and you know bring it up as as high as I can and it's got to be very special for you to go back will you be continuing to compete uh, through this quad as an associate head coach at Indiana. No, no, I, I, I solely want to focus on, you know, my coaching career. Um, you know, I get, I gave international wrestling the most I could. Uh, my body started falling apart and, you know, I started growing my family. We have one child, a uh, little boy, he's one years old. His name's Malachi. And we're in two weeks, we'll have another child. Um, we don't know the sex yet. You know, it's going to be a surprise. It's so. a boy. It's a boy. That's what I, that's what I've been saying, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just, you know, now, now it's time for that next step in life. And, you know, I'm excited for it. You know, that I competed, I'm done. I, I gave it all I have. And now it's time to give back to these, you know, to these student athletes at Indiana university. Angel Escobedo has been our guest today in the Nike hot seat today. One of my favorite guys in our sport. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today about this uh, very special moment in your career. Looking forward to the impact you have uh, back home being a Hoosier yet again. The crimson. Oh, the crimson and cream. Can you imagine? Yes. It's going to do it one more time. Angel <laughs> Escobedo. Who else? Do you, who do you want to thank on the way out, man? Yeah, I just want to thank, you know, our athletic director. I want to thank. Uh, Dwayne Goldman. I just want to thank them for this opportunity. I also want to thank my wife, uh, my family, you know, my, my parents, my mom, my uncles, all of them, all my friends, just for, you know, keeping faith in me and just helping me in this transition. I, I'm just so thankful. And I also want to thank, you know, Cyclone Wrestling, Cyclone Nation. Um, they were really great to me and my family. And, you know, just thankful that, you know, these three years were, were really great and a blessing. All right, being reunited with Dwayne Goldman for ESCO is, is, is pretty special. It's the guy that recruited him. It's pretty cool to see guys return as alum to coach the teams they came from. Yeah, this is, um, you know, ESCO Beto was the first guy to get hired since Kevin Jackson has stepped away from the program, whatever you want to call it. You know, when Simmons left, I, I mean, this is probably the obvious choice for Indi Indiana alumni go after Angel Escobedo. You know, I, I think he was leaning actually towards Pitt a little bit yeah, from what was. I what I heard. And, uh, you know, this uh, when Simmons walked away, this is really kind of the perfect fit. Indiana, obviously, the overall package, being an alum, um, home state, this, this makes total sense for him. All right, still twisting in the wind. The Paulsons, any word there? You know, I've heard um, Virginia, Pitt, Campbell are in the mix for some of these twins. I just how many I, more guys can Campbell <laughs> hire? My, yeah, my. I mean, there's there's always there's money in these RTCs. Well, That's what we're we're finding that you can put them in the RTC. If you can't find them on the staff. Now, the biggest thing I think is these guys are gonna have to split up. We're not gonna, there's not a lot of room on roster or staffs. 
to hire twins. I mean, uh, so I don't know. Iowa did. Yes. Uh, so they, I think they're gonna probably have to split up if that's gonna be the best thing for their careers in the future. So I think we'll see Trent at Campbell. I'm gonna call Travis probably at Virginia. That's How can just, you tell? I, I just kind of what I've been hearing. No, so. I mean literally by looking at him. How can you tell? Uh, one's got a lot of hair. One's out. Not so much hair. All right, our coaching news continues after the break, but this time it's on the senior level. Catch that next right here on GWN, powered by Powerade. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com. Clarissa Chun has officially been named the assistant national women's coach for Team USA. She joins Terry Steiner's staff based in Colorado Springs, where the U.S. Olympic Training Center and USA Wrestling are based. Here to talk about her transition from competition to coaching is the world champ herself, Clarissa Chun. Cece, how are you? Good. Thank you, Scott. How's it going? <laughs> How long has the discussion been going on between you and Coach Steiner and, and the balance at USA Wrestling to have you added to the staff? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, I um, after I decided to be done competing in 2016, you know, it's kind of like, what's the next step? And I uh, was looking at Missouri Valley College, you know, my alumni, uh, where I went, or where I went to school for three years, uh, where I wrestled at. And, you know, I wanted to let, you know, coaches know that have impacted my wrestling career, you know, that I'm, this is what I'm thinking, that I wanted to get into coaching and whatnot. So, and I guess they were like, hey, you know, let's, let's talk, let's um, see what's going on and we want to help you, you know, and, and I'm, I don't know. I'm really excited for the opportunity. So long way from Oahu to uh, to.
to Denver, Colorado, but you've literally traveled the world on behalf of women's wrestling. You were there at the beginning when wrestling, especially women's wrestling, wasn't getting the type of respect that you and I both knew it deserved. But now women's wrestling has come into its own and we're seeing the U.S. rise. You get to help impact the very future of USA women's wrestling. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm super excited. I, I get really excited seeing the sport grow. I get really excited going to all these girls and women's events, these tournaments, you know, whether it's in Hawaii or um, like the body bar na- or the women's nationals now, you know, and getting to like meet all these girls and seeing the amazing talent that they have at such a young age, you know, um, just exciting, exciting times for USA wrestling. And um, the rise of the girls in women's wrestling. <laughs> 18 years competing at the senior level. I did the math. And in that 18 years, five U.S. Open titles, 2011 Pan American Games silver, four gold medals at the Pan American Championships, a runner-up at four U.S. World Team trials. Each one of those runner-ups, by the way, broke my heart. Three U.S. Opens and all of that. I'm going to ask you this. It's a, it's, a, it's a question I can ask any athlete in any sport. Is there one that stands out uh, when you really felt that this is the best I can be, period? And it doesn't have to be Olympics, does it? It can be any of those. Uh, you know, um, for me, the turning point was 2008 Olympic trials. You know, Patricia Miranda was a very tough competitor. You know, she was an Olympic bronze medalist herself. And... Uh, it was she was a tough opponent that I hadn't beaten before, and I guess that was a moment where I started believing in myself and my abilities and what I can do and trusting in everything that I put in. And um, I see a lot of that in a lot of the girls on the on the team, like today. So, you know, kind of, I'm hoping to help get them to that next step, that next level to get them on that podium and stay there. You know, and I'm, I'm excited for all of it. So. so proud of you, but you know this comes from the heart. We love you so much. We appreciate all you've done for our sport and continue to do and will as the new assistant coach with Terry Steiner on our national team. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Scott. Yeah. China's been around forever, it seems. I mean, 18 years on the senior level alone. She started her career in judo, and she did so in Hawaii, a state you wouldn't think has a lot of great wrestling. But if you think back on those that have come out of Hawaii, perhaps we're overlooking that beautiful state. We do. We completely overlook them. And I'm not sure really why, because we've, we've got some uh, standouts that have come from there. So in USA Wrestling, coming back, I think, to uh, help our young women um, our, our young gals, I guess, in the mm-hmm. sport, I think is really great for Terry Steiner to pick her uh, to be a part of this program. I mean, you obviously Helen Marulis, those are the people that we're going to in the future be a part of this program. But uh, Clarissa Chung, I mean, there's a, a wealth of knowledge, experience there that she can really kind of help our United States girls figure out how to wrestle internationally, and she's got it. So it uh, uh, doesn't hurt to have a, an Olympic bronze medalist on your, on your staff and a world champ. One that can also bowl, by the way. Lots of wrestling discussion left right here on the show, so don't go anywhere. This segment brought to you in part by our friends at Yellow Blue LED. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built.
The NCAA has announced the next four destinations for the Division I championships. After the 2018 finals in Cleveland, the NCAAs will return to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the first time since 1957. The tournament will then travel to U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis and then back to St. Louis in 2021. In 2022, the championships return to Detroit, Michigan, Detroit Rock City. Tony, happy with the host sites? Yeah, I'm saying I'm, I'm most excited about Pittsburgh just because of the amount of fans that are out there and it hasn't been there for it's a huge. long time. So, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people that, you know, there's some history out there. They're going to come out that, you know, maybe not travel to St. Louis like traditionally it's been. Um, also, I'm really excited about Detroit. I, you know, I'm hearing that's downtown Detroit. Lots of uh, nightlife scene, I guess, and lots of restaurants. For I thought you were going to go a different way. Yeah, so, I mean, this is um, <laughs> this is going to be a... Uh, and I mean, it's also close to the Canada border, so there's lots of good things to do in Canada as well. So this is going to be fun uh, to see uh, us up in Detroit, and good to see us going from other different cities and getting, giving them some wrestling love. I like the idea of wrestling in a football state. And Minneapolis is going to be a unique experience for sure. Well, Minneapolis is another state with a, a lot of you know good history, like PA as well. You know, it's I'm, I'm kind of a little skeptic of them being in the football stadiums of what it's going to be like for the fan experience media will be there right on on the mats but as a fan you know looking at the ncaa basketball championships and football stadiums there's not really a, a a good site you know it's a it's a full basketball court but you've got individual mats so if somebody's clear over here it's just going to be a little it's going to be interesting to see how they set it up and how many you know different levels of seating they're going to be. You can only have so many seats around the mats on the floor. So it's uh, time will tell how they how they make that happen. Well, we're out of time for this week, Tony. For all of us here at GWN and the Takedown Studios, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Global Wrestling News.